welcome to the Niche Podcast. This is a space that I created to explore businesses and the journey they take when catering to a niche market. So if you're feeling a little bit niche today, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Thank you so much for stopping by and staying niche with me. Today we're going to be talking about staying niche in the marketing space. I have in the hot seat none other than Mr. Max Lepselter. Max is an incredible entrepreneur. He owns a company called Max Branding and he services to none other than professional athletes in the NFL, MLB, and NBA. We have known each other for some time now and we work within the same space and demographic. So I'm really excited to hear him talk about how he started his company, how he managed to stay niche, and how he continues to thrive while servicing professional athletes. So Max, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your time and I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to share with us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. We, uh, I am very excited to get this off the ground and you know, discuss a bunch of unique logistics and concepts and ideas. Yeah. So, um, Max, if you will, just tell, tell our listeners a little bit about, about you, a little bit about your background, where you're from, and um, just give us a little bit of san- sense of who you are. Absolutely. Again, I appreciate the introduction. Uh, name is Max Lepselter from northern New Jersey, born and raised. I, as I've told you numerous times, I am a big fan of southern Florida and hope to uh, you know, make my way down there in the not too distant future. But like Woo-hoo. I said, in New Jersey, as well as uh, New York. Uh, myself, kind of, I grew up in this sports entertainment industry, which I'll we'll kind of dive into in a little bit. But um, I am the eldest of three. I have been in a nine-year relationship, hopefully soon to get engaged and start my family. Um, But to me, uh, you know, getting my career and uh, all my logistics in place to really hit the ground running, start this company and have it moving in the direction it's currently moving and beyond is something that was very, very important to me. And like anybody else, got to have a plan in place. Mm-hmm. So uh, I am the type of individual, as I've said to you numerous times, I like to make stuff happen. Uh, to me, you got you to gotta build organic relationships. Not every relationship you're going to build uh, may be mutually beneficial, but hopefully uh, you know, it, co- it does always come back around, and I always believe that is, that is the case. So I really try and do well with people, do well by people, and uh, you know, try and work with individuals as well as have friendships and business relationships with people who are looking to do the right thing. And that to me is probably the most important thing uh, I hold true. You mentioned that, um, that you're about to be engaged. Congratulations. <laughs> I didn't Thank know that. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Yes, I've been with uh, my high school sweetheart, Caitlin, for about nine years now, a long time, obviously, like yeah. anybody else, yeah. you know, ups and downs. And uh, you know, we were able to make it work. And somebody to me is, Renata, I know you can appreciate this, mm-hmm. having a female that's ambitious, her own career goals, um, you know, family goals and kind of just really having great qualities that you want in a, you know, a partner, a wife, a mother, that's something that uh, a lot of people chase for a lifetime. And fortunately I was able to have that at a young age and, you know, we really grew up together. So really, uh, really excited for what's to come over the next six months, a year. And I'm so excited for both of you. I know it's a crazy time and I can't wait to get the invite. Hint, hint. But you mentioned that you grew up in the sports industry through your dad's company. I wanted to know, how was the process of deciding that you wanted to branch off and create your own brand? And that process of becoming an entrepreneur by yourself and creating your own niche business. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. Um, Yes, I I grew up in this industry. My father, Mark, uh, has been in the NFL and marketing as well as broadcasting representation industry for about 25 years now. Uh, Funny enough, he started his his company back in 95, 96 when he was running Lawrence Taylor's sports bar uh, right outside Giant Stadium. Uh, You know, he was great in marketing. And then when Lawrence was kind of going through his rough patch shortly after retirement, uh, they started working together. And from there, it kind of took off, ended up signing the Barber Brothers in the 97 draft 
and again, it just elevated uh, from there. So for him, he started on the NFL side. I was doing NFL and marketing side for uh, about 10 years and change. Uh, and then from there in 08, 09, transformed the company into more of a broadcasting agency as he saw how cutthroat and, uh, you know, how unloyal the uh, on the field NFL representat- representation mm-hmm. side was and kind of saw it as guys who are getting into the next phase of their career. Uh, they have families. They're looking for consistency, uh, even even if they're, uh, you know, career long broadcasters, just people, uh, different mindset versus putting your career in the hands of a 21, 22 year old. <laughs> who may jump to the next individual. Now, not all athletes are like that, but as we've seen firsthand between the two of us, uh, that definitely could be the case occasionally. And with that said, you know, growing up and seeing that, you know, humbly, I, I had the pleasure and the, uh, the opportunity to attend Pro Bowls, you know, as a uh, middle school, high school individual, uh, being a huge fan of the NFL, so being able to go meet my favorite players, uh, you know, when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, Seeing that dynamic, seeing how the industry worked, uh, you know, being around athletes, being around talent, it was just something I always knew I wanted to do. A lot of people, you know, when they're in high school, even when they're in college, even as they graduate, they're not sure what they want to do. For me, since day one, I knew that this was kind of the industry I wanted to be in. It was Mm -hmm. just always a passion of mine. And I always had such a keen sense for the league. So to kind of transition into my company now, um, my father and I agreed that it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best idea uh, for me to kind of work under him I, in this industry. You got to earn your stripes elsewhere. You got to earn the respect of your peers. It doesn't matter whose kid you are, grandkid. It, none of that matters. It, it's about what you're going to be able to produce and what value you're going to bring to a company or your clients. So I, I've never. I interned for him throughout college, but beyond that, I have never worked for him. I was doing some work in, uh, for a company called Thusio where I was doing client entertainment, uh, some sales, some unique opportunities on that front. From there, I was doing marketing and endorsements for a, a, another sports marketing agency. Had a nice time there and learned uh, a lot on the digital landscape. And then over the last five months, I just transitioned into my own business. Uh, it's an affiliation uh, of the Max Sports Company, obviously, you know we we do some work together, but uh, two separate entities. And my company is called Max Branding. Mm-hmm. Now, Max Branding specializes in all off the field opportunities for athletes. And to kind of dive deeper into that, um, I am not certified by the NFL, but everything that does not involve the NFL contract is kind of what I handle for my clients. So endorsements partnership, sponsorship, media, PR, content creation, social media management, day-to-day management. Uh, again, everything that just does not involve the NFL contract. Right. And a lot of athletes like to separate it and differentiate it because let their agent handle the contract, kill it for them on that side, and then they have their off-the-field guy. One thing I will stress to you is the days of just the general marketing and endorsement guy, it's just a different story now. Uh, with the with the rise of affiliate marketing, analytics, social media, uh, influencer marketing, it's a different time. So that's why guys in the in sports who think, hey, just because I'm a professional athlete, I should be making X amount of dollars off the field. It's a different story. You need an individual like myself. Um, your social media is key, and mm-hmm. again, making sure that um, making sure you're building a brand is kind of is one thing that is really important. And, um, from there we've been able to work with over 250 different brands and businesses over the last three, four years alone. And, uh, it's, it's growing every day rapidly and we've got a great team around us. We have phenomenal clientele. And that's uh, my final thought on that is having clientele who appreciate your work and who are looking to build with you on a daily basis, not guys who are just expecting to get a phone call if something comes in. And do you have a sport that's more prominent than the other? For example, do you work with the NFL players more than MLB and NBA, for instance? The NFL has been the main niche. Um, I do work with a multitude of other influencers on the fashion and fitness side. Okay. Um, but uh, dish, we are really trying to segue a little more into basketball and baseball, right. even hockey. Um, I think the MLB has such a void in the marketplace from for you know what we do, and I think these guys need to be branded uh, in a right. much better light. Uh, mm-hmm. I think the MLB really needs that kind of, uh, we'll say, service. But the NFL thus far has really been the niche. And, you know, based on referrals, that's kind of where my clientele has gone. 
Right, and worth pursuing it. Well, I got to tell you, there's, there's, you know what? We can, we, we're definitely going to do real estate together. You know it. <laughs> Without a question. And that's, you know, as I've always said, you are my go-to, which, uh, you know, I'm very happy, yeah, very happy no, to say. Is- and obviously you do beyond phenomenal work and how, you know, it's incredible. Somebody like yourself who you specialize in real estate, but you understand so much regarding branding and marketing and how essential that is into growing uh, a brand and growing your niche and everything you're doing. So to me, uh, connecting with somebody like yourself has been just extremely incredible and, uh, you know, really looking forward to growing our relationship. Oh, well, that's nice. Thank you, Max. I appreciate my, it. Right back pleasure. at you. Um, right, let me ask you this. Uh, you're not off the hook just yet. We're not done. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. So what would you say if, you know, for, for those that are listening to this thinking, okay, well, I, you, maybe they're not in the marketing industry. Maybe they're not in the real estate industry. Um, so any other industry outside of ours, what would you say um, is a challenge when building a niche business? So- I think it's obviously like anything else, which is kind of cliche, it's perfecting your craft and how you do that is figuring out, you know, what, putting the structure in place, what's in front of you, what's your objective, what are the steps in order to achieve that objective, infrastructure is key. Uh, early in my career, one uh, one thing I was always one thing I always pride myself on. One thing I always think I was great at was selling um, and connecting with individuals. But for me, perfecting the other side, the internal side, the infrastructure is something that I really uh, I really needed to kind of work on. Mm-hmm. And I think if you can work on your weaknesses, uh, if you can work on your weaknesses right off the bat, I think that is something as you kind of get in your own business and you grow. That's got to be where you specialize, you know, because you can always you know, work harder on your craft in terms of what you're great at. But kind of handling those weaknesses is something that you got to tackle early on. And it's something that I think people will have a lot more success. And I also think it's communication, whether it's with a client, whether it's with another business, an associate, uh, a team member. Uh, communication is going to be key. You have to have mutual respect. Uh, You can't ever look at it, regardless if you're the CEO, the president, the managing director, or the intern. You got to treat all your employees with uh, with mutual respect, and you got to show them the way. So, to me, uh, being able to show my team and teach my team things, as well as being able to work on some things that I struggled with over the years, has really propelled me in a situation where I feel very comfortable going forward with my. Right, and don't you feel that you know I I feel that this in 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 my industry that sometimes saying no to something is the best, like not every opportunity is no, right. You're hundred percent right. I think one thing I want to allude to on that when you're first getting the business off the ground, I think, yeah, you got to really take on as many opportunities as you can just because you're getting the business off the ground. Uh, you're trying to get equity in the bank. You're trying to get sweat equity and, you know, uh, kind of, uh, that trial period with other individuals that you want to work with. But there comes a point where if one thing I learned early on is if that individual needs you more than they need them, then you better make sure that you're, you know, you're getting the reciprocated value. You know, to me, that's just the uh, that this I apologize. That would be the one important essential key. Mm -hmm. You can't take every dollar off the table. You got to learn to pick and choose, take the right opportunities and learn to build around them. What would you say? is the best part of working with pro athletes in any, in any sport. So basketball, football. so what's the best part of working with an athlete and what is the most challenging part of working with an athlete? Absolutely. Those are obviously two loaded, but enticing, <laughs> enticing, enticing <laughs> questions. I'll say you on can the only end, pick one. <laughs> I know on the lower end, the biggest struggle is uh, you said these guys are viewed as such higher up individuals in society, which Hey, you know what? Again, being such a big NFL and NBA fan, I've absolutely put athletes on pedestals. Even, even, even though I represent numerous guys in the NFL, I still have my own favorite players that obviously I would never even I would never even dream of working with. But with that, it's keeping these guys humble and them understanding not only your personal value but the value around them and what people are doing for them. Whether it's the financial advisor, well, it's the real estate agent, the NFL agent. Uh, even their, their best friend who's you know, assisting them on their day-to-day. It's making sure the most challenging thing is for these guys to realize that, hey, 
you can't do it alone. Your talent, like anything else in life, your talent will get you very far, but it does come to a halt and it comes to an, an, a, uh, we'll say an immediate stop if you don't have the right pieces in place around you. That's why there's guys like we can say a guy like Tom Brady has been so successful in 20 years in the NFL because he has a phenomenal team and support system around him. So that to me is the most challenging. My favorite part about working with the athletes is, you know, like you, again, going back to that first section, it's these guys are reviewed as such higher ups and being able to build such an organic relationship with them, being able to see kind of what that day to day is like from their, you know, the practice to, you know, what their home life is like after hours or the off season and really being able to assist these guys, these guys in, uh, you know, opportunities across their entire life, not just that evolves on the football field. Mm -hmm. So I think being able to see all those different logistics has been the coolest uh, and probably the most enticing thing I think I've been able to you know, get out of my business. One of the most interesting things to me is that I get messages from people daily asking me about how can they start working with athletes? How can they get into that space? So I'm going to turn this question around on you and I'm going to ask you if there's someone, what advice would you give to someone that is listening right now and perhaps they want to start turning their business around and they want to start servicing athletes and pro athletes in the NFL, MLB, and NBA, what would you say this person would have to do right now once they stopped listening to this interview? Uh, first and foremost, you have to understand your industry. You have to understand that niche, which is exactly what I've been talking about for this entire, you know, this entire duration. Um, you have to know what you want to do with that. And then once you figure that out, um, you got to get out there. You got to put your name out there. You got to start doing little things to, again, build sweat equity in the bank where some of these athletes know what you're doing. So if you're trying to get into the marketing, you know, maybe connect with somebody, you know, that went to college with this guy or, you know, reach out to somebody who knew somebody they can at least get your foot in the door. I couldn't agree more. I am constantly telling people that leveraging your contacts, your network is the number one thing that you can do in order to get yourself closer to the demographic you want to start servicing. So Max, tell us a little bit about your long-term vision for your business. Can you share a little bit about where Max Branding is going within the next three years? Absolutely. Okay. Um, truthfully, I see this, the biggest thing is you can't take on more than you can chew. And as we said a little while ago, you have to, you got to make sure it's the right opportunities. So with that, I see this business um, taking off where I would like to build a team around in the next three years. Uh, I see us having about 50 to 75 clients. And in that time frame, I see us signing at least one to two first or second round picks year over year. Uh, as well as landing a few perennial pro bowlers at skill position, uh, at the skill positions in some of the bigger markets. And on the NBA side, we do hope to represent NBA players on the court. Um, so hopefully we can, we can start getting that side of the business off the ground. Max, you are killing it, my friend. I absolutely love it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here and sharing a little bit of your journey and how you got to be in this insane niche business of ours. So I appreciate your time, my friend. I know you and I are doing a lot of projects together, so let's keep this train going. Thank you again for having me. Absolutely. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Max, I'm going to post all his links website below and keep the conversation going so you can learn a little bit more about his amazing company, Max Branding. And if you're listening to this, I'm so excited that you are here and spent some time with us. Please do subscribe. Leave me your comments. I'd love to know what you think and who you'd like me to interview next. Get out there. Do amazing things in your life, in your business, and stay niche -y.